universe you and I are living in is a far more novel and complicated place than the early universe was. Well, some people would say, well, that's just a consequence of the unfolding of developmental processes. But this asks the question, what are developmental processes? Why should the universe have a preference for order over disorder? Human technologies, languages, migrations, art movements, ideologies are not something different from nature. They're the same uh, download of process that we see in the movement of continents, the evolution of new species of animals, except that these human novel emergent situations are happening much more quickly. So I see the cosmos, if you will, as a kind of novelty producing engine, a kind of machine which produces complexity in all realms, physical, chemical, social, whatever, and then uses that achieved level of complexity as the platform for further complexity. Really, time is only experienced by the events which occur within it. And I maintain that the early universe had very little going on, and consequently, Time moved very, very slowly. The character of time as we approach the present is that there are more and more physical domains and energetic domains in which change can occur. For example, the early universe was a pure plasma, a pure swarm of unassociated electrons. You didn't even have atomic systems, let alone chemistry molecular chemistry, life, complex speciated life, and uh, dynamically balanced planetary ecosystems. Each one of those more complex phenomena crystallized out or emerged, if you will, from the previous systems that had come into existence. So when I say time is speeding up, what I mean really is that more and more is happening. More and more is happening. And if you ask the question, well, what would be the ultimate state of connectivity or of happening? It's when all points are connected to all other points. Somehow this concept of connectivity is intimately linked to the concept of complexity. Consciousness is this integrative function in biology which takes data which may appear profoundly unrelated and in fact brings it into some kind of a congruent relationship. We say an organism coordinates a point of view. Well, in a way, what's happening over time is that the universe is coordinating a point of view. And as it does this, it becomes somehow more aware, more self-conscious, more uh, being-like and less thing-like. And with the advent of human beings using spoken language, a, a new kind of possibility is born. It's called epigenetic change. In other words, change which is not about genes, but which is about uh, languages, customs, behaviors of human beings, epigenetic change reaches its uh, dramatic culmination in speech, writing, uh, and communication of all sorts. And so the carriers of epigenetic change, the human beings, are automatically then the carriers of accelerated novelty. And so when you look at, let's say, evolution on a coral reef, and you compare it, let's say, to the evolution of political ideas in modern Europe, obviously, modern Europe's rate of change in its domain is thousands of times faster. So by moving from the genetic to the epigenetic realm, we have vastly accelerated all kinds of processes. Now we appear to be about to move from the strictly human domain to the human-machine symbiosis domain.
and of course machines process information, make connections, and do their work at a rate thousands of times faster than any human being can work.